How's it going bro? In this video I'm going to show you exactly what got me from $2.50 to over 1000 per video. This is the exact framework I've used. If you want to make money as a video editor, which I'm assuming if you've clicked on this video you are, this is the framework you want to follow. So I'm not going to spend too long on introducing it, let's just jump straight in. So we're going to be using this thing called a Miro board. This just lets me draw and stuff. We're going to all Alex Becker mode now. So essentially your goal right now is to make more money editing, right? Just make money. As a video editor, you can basically figure out how much money you're going to make by this simple equation, which is how much you're charging per video multiplied by how many videos you're doing. If you can obsess over this formula, you will make more money editing. It doesn't matter what stage you're at. Let's say you're making $10 per video right now. If you're doing $10 and you're doing one video a week, you're going to be making $10 a week. You're making $40 a month. If you're doing $100, so you increase your prices, you're still doing one video a week, you're making $100 per, um, per week. So... 400 a month instead of increasing your how much you're getting paid per video you could also increase how many videos you're getting done so you could do 100 still making 100 per video but now you're doing three videos a week so now you're getting paid 300 a month you're getting paid what is that 1200 a month the beauty of this is it's infinitely scalable right now i'm charging around a thousand one thousand five hundred so let's go on the low end one thousand if I can get four videos done a week, that's 4K a week, that's 12K a month. If you have a goal right now of how much you want to make as an editor, you need to kind of sort out the maths, kind of have a general idea of how the maths works out. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to change this variable, how to change how much you're making per, per video. There's going to be a few things that affect how much you're getting paid. Those things are going to be your editing skill, this just means how good is your animations, how good is your pacing, things like that. Then you've got branding. These are basically the two things that are going to affect your prices the most. Your skill, things like smooth animations. You've got your sound design, you've got your pacing, you've got your storytelling, you've got, what else is there? That's essentially it for skill. You've got your motion design, I guess. Those all kind of go together. Your brand, your brand is essentially just your online presence. It's your Twitter, it's your Discord, it's your Instagram. Are you available on YT Jobs? All of these platforms, any anywhere where people can see you online, that adds to your brand. Your brand, this is important I say, your brand does not equal followers. We're not going to delve too deep into brand today just because it's a whole separate topic. But essentially you want your, your following, your your online presence to be catered towards creators. Don't start doing giveaways because that attracts more editors, but you're gonna build your brand through creating an attractive profile to creators. So if you have skill and brand, people will be more likely to spend more on you. When you've worked with someone, and this is essentially how raising your prices will look like, right? You've worked with someone, so you start working with them here, you're charging them, let's say for simplicity's sake, $20, and you're getting better, you're getting better, your skills are getting better. And now you're thinking, hmm, creator, I want to charge $50 now. I think I'm worth it. In theory, this sounds easy, right? Okay, you get better, you charge more. The problem is there's one fundamental emotion inside of you that's going to be coming up when you're trying to raise your prices. That's going to be fear. Fear will determine how easy it is for you to raise your prices. Because imagine it, right? This is your graph, this is your time, no, this is time, this is your income. Your income is growing, your income is growing, your income is growing, and you raise your prices and now you're scared that if the person says no, you've got fear that it'll drop to zero. This is essentially a primal fear that's inside most editors. It was inside of me as well. This is something that you're probably operating out of right now. The worst part about this is that let's say you're only making like $20 per video and you raise your price and you get a no, it doesn't feel as bad. But when you're building up, you're building up, let's say you're making 1K a month even, and now you raise your prices, you've got a lot more to lose. So what I'm gonna show you in this video is the framework that I've used to get rid of this fear, this fear of zero. Imagine that when you raise your prices, instead of having the fear that oh, I'm going to drop to zero. Okay, it might drop by like a tiny bit, but then you can continue building again. If you can get rid of, this, rid of this fear of you dropping all the way to zero, 
imagine how much more confidence you would go with when you are negotiating, when you are raising prices. So what this framework is called is the iterative pricing framework. Iterative means when something continuously changes, pricing, it just means your prices. Framework means follow this bitch. So these are the, this is the how the framework looks. So it's A, F, I, O. What that stands for is acquire, fill, identify, raise. And I'm gonna walk through this process now. This is essentially what you are going to live by over your editing career if you want to make more money per video. This literally got me from around $2.50 to 1,500 in the space of like three years. And in the last year, I've gone from about 200 to 1,500. So most of the progress I made following this. So stage one, acquire. All this means is you get clients, get clients. There's gonna be two ways you get clients. It's gonna be outbound and inbound. Outbound means you reaching out to clients. So it's you, reaching out to a client and then inbound is a client coming to you. A lot of people ask which one's better. The truth is you should, you could be doing both. The way you get inbound is by building a brand. The way you get outbound is by DMing people on Discord, DMing people on um, Twitter, YouTube jobs, Vouch, um, Instagram. You can go from YouTube and then get their email from that. So there's all these different ways that you can outreach. The reason I prefer outreach to inbound. I'm not saying inbound is bad. Inbound's amazing. I have most of my leads from inbound right now. The reason I preach outbound so much, so you outreaching to creators, is because you have full control. With inbound, you gotta build your brand. So let's say you take six months building your brand. You're only gonna start getting clients once you've started building the brand. With outreach, right now, like you could literally stop this video right now and start outreaching, and you would see like a linear correlation to how many clients you get. If you were getting, if you were sending 100 DMs and you get one client, you could send 200 and get two. And the best part about outreach is as you continue building your brand, so this is happening in the background, you get, you not only have more authority, so people will respond to you. So instead of one in every 100, you might get one in every 50. You also get better at outreaching. You understand how to message, how to negotiate. You're learning the skills of outreaching. So your response rate actually goes higher and higher and you have a full responsibility over how many people you can outreach to. You can outreach to however many people you want. So you're gonna be using these two techniques to acquire clients. And you're gonna keep getting more and more. You're gonna get multiple clients. You're not just gonna stop at one. You're gonna get one client and then you're gonna work with him. Then you're gonna get another client. You're gonna work with him, another, another. You're gonna keep working until you reach the next stage of this, which is fill. Fill is where you feel as though you have basically maxed out your capability for how much you can work. So a lot of people, they're scared of burnout, right? The problem is, let's say this is how hard you're working and this is time. You're working, you're working, you're working. And a lot of people, what they do is they set this, this max up for themselves because they don't want to burn out. They're saying, I'm not going to take on this many clients. I'm not going to work too, too many hours, things like that. So they're constantly staying under here, right? And they don't get burnt out, which is amazing. The problem is this is a like a threshold that they've set themselves. They have no idea where their actual burnout threshold is. It might be here, but they have no idea. What works a lot better is what I found worked for me is you've got you working, you working, you working as hard as possible. And then there's going to be a day where you hit that burnout threshold. You're going to get burnt out. And burnout, it, honestly, it lasts you a few days. You'll get better straight away. Just go socialize a bit, bro. Go outside, go talk to your family for once. Like, go have a fucking shower. Like, you'll be fine straight after this. But at least now you know, okay, as long as I stay under here, I'll be fine. Look how much harder you can work just by burning out one time. Not burning out, it won't even be that hard. You'll know when you've hit the fill position, when you've got too many clients and you've got too much work on your hands, when you start feeling as though your life is deteriorating because of you editing. And it's not that you're being lazy, but you're incorporating deep work, you're actually working productively, and you just feel like killing yourself. That's when you'll know you're filled up. And then you can stay slightly below it. And yeah. So once you've filled up your positions, let's say you've got four clients. This is where I usually stick around, around four clients at the same time. And let's say for math's sake, Let's say you're charging $100 for all of them, right? In fact, no, let's say you've got $100 for 
for f three of them. So 100, 100, 100, and then you've got one that negotiated you down to 80. So you've got four clients right now. Once you've filled up, you're going to move them over onto the next stage, which is identify. This is where you're going to identify two types of clients. It's going to be the lowest paying and it's going to be the assholes. So it's going to be the assholes. So lowest paying and assholes, you're going to identify them from here. So let's copy these, let's copy these guys over. From here, let's, first one is lowest paying, okay, 80. Let's put a little exclamation mark there. We've identified him as one of these two. Now, these three, they're paying $100 each. But let's say this guy, simple videos, barely any footage, $100 easy. This guy, he's all right. Like, he's a bit of an asshole sometimes, but I can deal with him and the videos are on as easy as hell. This guy, he, he's okay, but he's got like six hours of footage and whenever he gives revisions, he gives like 80 rounds and he's just annoying. He doesn't pay on time. So he's the asshole here. So we're going to identify him as well. We're going to put exclamation mark. What's important here is you only identify about one or two people. I recommend having four clients and then identifying two. This is what I found worked for me. Once you've identified them, we're going to move them onto raise. As you can imagine, this means raising your prices. So you've gotten the 100 and the 80. So the 100 client and the 80 client. And you're going to message these guys saying that, hey bro, I'm raising my prices. What's important here is that you are not asking them if you can raise your price. You are telling them. There's a fine difference. You need to go in here with some frame. You need to understand that, okay, if I lose this client, I am willing for that to happen. I believe it was, um, it might have been Charlie Munger or, or Naval Ravikant, like a super successful entrepreneur. They were saying the person who has the most power in a negotiation is the one who's more willing to walk away. You need to go into these conversations where you're raising your prices for these two arsehole clients with some frame. You need to be like, go in there with your chest raised up and be like, I am raising my price from this to this. You can tell them, like, be nice. Don't be an arsehole. Be like, hey, bro, I've loved working together. I'm charging this now as I've been getting really busy recently. The reason you ask this is, let's say there's two situations, right? In one scenario, they say yes. Perfect. You're getting paid more. You're getting paid um, 150 per video now. So you can tell them 150, 200, whatever you want raise it by 50 to 100. The worst case scenario is you get rejected, they say no. But it's fine because you got rid of low paying clients and assholes because these were the guys you identified. So you're only raising for these guys. So no matter what you're winning. And worst, worst, worst case scenario is both the clients say no. So you raise it for two people, both of them say no. And remember that fear that we talked about of your income going up and then down. So your income goes up and then it goes back to zero. That's no longer applic applicable because you might raise it, raise it, raise it. You still have these two clients that have stayed. So your income will basically never drop to zero. When you get rid of this fear, your fear of rejection, you, you are so much more powerful in negotiations like these. The person who's more willing to walk away is the person with the power. So you're going to raise it for the the two, the however many clients that you identified from before. And you're also going to raise it for anyone new coming in. So that means we have raised it for them. We're going back to acquire. You're going to do your inbound and your outbound. You're going to keep looking for clients. And you're going to have them at the new price of 150. So now... Let's say you bring on two, you've got two more spaces, so you've got a hundred client from before, hundred client from before, and now you've picked up two new clients. Let's say 150, 150. You 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 filled up your spaces, so now you can't work anymore. You identify the lowest paying, so the two hundreds. You DM the two hundred guys. Hey, I'm raising my prices. One of them says yes. One of them says no. Let's say, okay, you fill up one more space, and then you just keep going through that and through that. This works no matter where you are in your career. It doesn't matter right now if you're charging $4 or 400 or 4000 This works. And yeah, honestly, 
this is a broken framework which I have found has worked for me and has worked for the people that I coach. So please just, in, if you can ingrain any image into your head, let it be this. Like screenshot this, like draw this out and like po make it a poster on your wall. This is how important it is. And this is basically what I like to call this is the engine. The reason being, your entire editing career will be based off of this framework. Why? Because this means you have clients who are constantly getting bigger and bigger. And when you have clients that are bigger and bigger, let's say all the different parts of your editing career, how much you're making per, per month, this will be driven by you getting larger creators and people paying you more, as we discussed earlier. You getting better at editing, so your actual editing skills, that's a start, is going to get better because when you have larger creators and you're getting paid more, you have more incentives to get better, right? You're able to invest back into learning more skills. You're able to spend more time per video, meaning you can actually improve your editing skills with this framework. Even your network, when you work, when you go through this framework, naturally, each time you acquire someone and you work with a certain level, you're going to be working with slightly larger guys. This is how I went from like my first creators were literally like Fortnite channels with like 40 subscribers. Right now, my clients have more closer to like 20, 30 mil. And oh, I have my portfolio already open. I must have been showing someone. Like these are the guys I'm working with. And these are all like non NDA. So these are from the guys that I can actually share on my portfolio. There's other guys with like 20, 30 million that I can't share, but it's like it's decently large channels. So I went from like 40 to around 20, 30 million. That has gotten me into networks where these are some valuable guys and these are guys where you basically have anything you want if you need a client you can talk to one guy and he'll get it done so this is basically the engine i know this is a bit of a different video but i really like this idea of raw kind of coaching style so this is literally how i coach like if i'm ever in like a live coaching call of the boys that i teach this is the style of teaching that i use where i'm kind of speaking it through no like oh fast cuts or anything it's just me speak in my brain exactly what works and what has worked for me in the past was going to work for you so yeah if you do like this go like subscribe do all the youtube stuff more importantly leave a comment please tell me if you like this because i need to know if you enjoy stuff like this so i can continue doing it um hope you enjoyed that take care peace